Hi friends! Today we're going to go over my most anticipated releases for 2020. It is a surprise to absolutely no one that most of the books on this list are parts of series that I have already read because I am a series junkie. Technically it's just that I love fantasy and most fantasy books are parts of the series. The first book that we're going to talk about is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third and I believe final book in the Truly Devious series. This book follows a girl named Stevie who's sort of a genius at figuring out how to solve crimes and she is accepted into this very prestigious academy called Ellingham Academy and 70 years prior the owner of the academy's wife and daughter both went missing and so Stevie has kind of took it upon herself to discover what maybe happened 70 years prior and figure out how the whole mystery took place and everything that had happened. And so while Stevie is at the Academy, you see some of the past tense and the present day, and you get to see how the two things coincide. And there's some really shady stuff going on in the present day as well as in the past. And the second book ended on like a really weird cliffhanger that I really loved. I'm so excited about the third book and I cannot wait to read it and it comes out very very soon. Next on the list is Chosen by Kirsten White. This is the second book in the Slayer series and it is a continuation of sorts of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series and then the comic book series. It follows a girl named Nina and it takes place um, shortly after all of magic has been kicked out of our world and so Nina kind of thinks that maybe she is starting to turn into a demon even though magic has been ruled out of the world. I'm not sure of the complete logistics of it but it's basically like they stopped demons from being able to enter into our dimension and then the ones that were here got trapped here. So it's a thing and essentially um, it's just Nina and like the Watcher Society and I'm very interested in seeing how the book continues. I really enjoyed the first book. The third book is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. I can't remember the name of the series but it is the first book in the newest series. It is a follow-up to the Infernal Devices series which is the clockwork angel prince princess. So it's set in like the early 1900s. The Infernal Devices is probably my favorite so far out of all of Cassie's series. So I'm super excited to see. Um, even though we kind of know how everything ends up because we've seen so much present day versus what happened in the past. I'm just still really interested to see the stories and how everyone's connected and I think that's kind of my favorite thing about the Shadowhunters books is just the characters and the way that everyone's connected and how everything's weaves together and it's just really fun. I love reading that. The next book is Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the follow-up to last year's Aurora Rising which I loved. It follows a girl named Aurora who was put into a cryogenic sleep and was supposed to just basically be asleep for a couple of weeks. But she wakes up and discovers that it's been 220 years since she was put into her cryogenic sleep. So everyone and everything that she knows is completely gone and the world's a completely different place than what it was when she fell asleep. She is taken into this ragtag group of people who are somewhat kind of sort of friends, maybe, maybe not. She's kind of put into their world and they're trying to help her and there's a lot of political drama going on. It is set in space because it's a sci-fi and it's really interesting. There's different creatures, different species. I really enjoyed it. It's very action heavy at the beginning and there's a, like I said a lot of political drama which I love. You know I love a good political story. Again super excited. Next is Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan. This is the fifth book in the Trials of Apollo series which I believe is going to be the final book. Rick's series typically either have five or three books so since it's the fifth book I'm assuming it's going to be the last at least in this series because we all know that Rick has way more going on in his brain than any one person should. The Trials of Apollo series follows the god Apollo following some things that happened in previous series. Um, he is cast out of Olympus and is turned into a human named Lester Papadopoulos, I believe is his name. In a while, I don't know where I pulled that name from. He's basically turned into a human teenager and he doesn't have his six pack abs and his glowing bronze skin and his blonde flowy hair. But he just hates himself. He, he's very unhappy with the body that Zeus put him in. It follows him and Meg, who is a demigod that he's attached to. And right now, I haven't read book four yet. I've read book 
three. Book four just came out I think in September or October and you know how the end of my reading year has gone. I haven't read book four yet but it was getting to a part to where we were bringing in characters from Camp Half-Blood and Camp Jupiter um, so it's all kind of just coming in together and, and, and I love that. And again uh, it's the same as Cassie's books like I love the way that the stories are interwoven and the characters are brought in together and how it's this one huge world but everybody's kind of all in the same playing field. I really love that. Next is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. Tweet Cute is about a girl and a boy named Pepper and Jack and their family's own rival grilled cheese food trucks. That's right, I said Pepper Jack and grilled cheese food trucks. That's what I said. I am so excited about this. It is so cute sounding and I'm just like super excited. Um, the two teens, uh, they go to the same school and they both run the Twitter accounts for their food trucks and they don't know that they're the ones that run the Twitter accounts. And so it's basically like they have like a fight and a rivalry online, also know each other in person. And I don't really know what happens, but I'm super excited about it, if you can't tell. The next four I don't know a lot about, but they're basically either just like really awesome titles or books by authors that I read books that I loved this year and I'm super excited about the books that are coming up. So the first is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer, who actually read books by in 2018. I read the entire Lunar Chronicles in 2018, fell in love, didn't read any of her works this year because I'm a loser, but I really love Marissa Meyer now. So I need to read some of her things and Instant Karma is coming out. It's considered like contemporary, but it has some fantastical elements in it. Uh, it involves a girl and something about she's able to make people around her suffer their bad karma. Sounds great. The next is Fable by Adrienne Young. Know nothing. I, I read the blurb on Goodreads but I have no idea what it said and honestly I loved Sky in the Deep so much that I really don't even care. I know it's a different story. It doesn't follow that same world that Sky in the Deep and The Girl the Sea gave back follows but I'm here for it. Whatever it is. I'm like I want all of the Adrian Young that I can get. Then we have a book by Grady Hendrix and it is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. It's a lot of words and they sound awesome together. I've read Grady Hendrix previously. I read My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I really enjoyed. I didn't love it. It wasn't my favorite book ever, but I did really enjoy it. And with its title, like Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I did not even read the blurb. I just added it to my list and went, yep, that's the one. Then we have Well Played by Jen DeLuca. It is a follow-up to last year's Well Met, which was one of my favorite books of the year. It follows a, it's a contemporary set in a small town and they have a Renaissance festival every year. So it follows them at a Renaissance festival and I just loved it. I love the Renaissance festival. It's like my favorite place in the whole entire world. I got to go again this year. I missed last year and I hate it when I miss going to the Renaissance festival. Like I would just be there every weekend if it was just a little bit closer to me. Oh, I love that place so much. I don't know who Well Played follows, but I know it's a follow-up, but I'm sure that it follows someone that we already met in the characters from the first book. So I don't even know and I don't even care. I just want more of it. Eleven is a twofer because it's actually two books in the same series and I just found out today, like less than a half hour ago, that they were coming out this year. Did not even, was not even on my radar. Like Goodreads let me down in a bad way because normally like when I look on Goodreads and I look through um they show you like releases of authors that you've read before and these weren't even on there and I am so very upset <laughs> by that because I just like randomly came upon it. The books are The Lost City and The Morning Flower and they are by Amanda Hawking and they are the third series in the <laughs> Trill world. So you have the Trill trilogy and then the Canon Chronicles and now this one is the... I can't remember the name of the third people. Gosh, I'm a loser. Again, I like literally just looked this as like a half hour ago and just found out about it. So the very, like to me, the interesting thing is that the books are coming out in July and August or July and September, one of the two. So they're coming out very close together, which she did last year with her Valkyrie series. They came out like in January, February. And I didn't love those and I'm very sad that I didn't love those but she hasn't written in this world since 2015 so she's waited five years she's published three books since then I'm just like I loved 
the Trill trilogy and I loved the Canon Chronicles. They're actually on my list to reread this year. And then just happy accident that it came to be that I was planning to reread those and now I find out that she's got another couple of books coming. I don't know if it's a duology or a trilogy. Right now there's just two books that it says are in the series and she's releasing them back to back so I imagine it's just the duology but I don't really know but I'm here for it. And then the last book is kind of just a concession. It's probably not happening this year. It's probably going to be a 2021 release from what we from the information that we're getting and that is the Witchlands book four by Susan Dennard. Suze said a couple of days ago that she expects the book to be done later this year by like fall winter but she is typically in the spring release time frame so she imagines that the that tour will keep her in that same time frame that she typically releases so it will probably be spring of 2021 but you know a girl can dream a girl can dream you know i'm really honestly i'm just so happy for suze and the frenchman and the little cricket if you don't know Suze is pregnant and it's so exciting and I'm, I'm just so happy for them both and for their family and I honestly would be happy to wait until 2022 for a release if they you know get a happy healthy baby. I'm I'm so totally fine with that. I'm so super excited for them. I'm like I don't know why I'm so excited over someone that I don't personally know having a child a because I don't like babies and b because I don't know her but I just She's been very open about her struggles trying to conceive and it's been, they've been through a lot. And so I just, I'm very emotionally involved now and I want the little cricket. So I'm excited. So I felt like I needed to say that if it comes out in 2020, it will definitely be on my, on my list. But if it's not coming out until 2021, then it'll be on 2021's list. And at least you'll know to look out for it. But you know what, if it doesn't come out this year, that gives you a whole bunch of time to read the four books that come prior in the Witchland series. They are Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Sight Witch, Blood Witch. Read them. They're amazing. The first book, Truth Witch, follows Safia and Azult and they are best friends and they go on this epic adventure. They're running from people that want to use Safi's powers against her and or kill her so that no one can use Safi's powers against themselves and it, there's sea battles and magic creatures and different witcheries and great friendships and cute boys and I am so excited about this entire series. Um, I just did a reread last year. Honestly could reread it every year for the rest of forever and you catch new things every time. It's a very intricate world that I just love. All right guys those are my 12 books that I'm looking forward to in 2020. Let me know in the comments below if you have heard of any of these, if you're looking forward to these, if you're looking forward to something different. Let me know maybe it's something that I should be looking into because books are great. I love books. I am currently surrounded by books. Typically this is where I tell you my posting schedule. I have decided that my booktube, my three-year booktube anniversary is on the 13th of January as I have a crap ton of videos to post this month. So I've decided that I'm going to post every day from the 1st to the 13th and the 13th will be the booktube anniversary tag and you're gonna get all of my stats and wrap-ups and just all of these end of the year beginning of the year videos between now and then because it sounded like a great idea everybody else has vlogmas and 12 days of vlogs and all that I've got 13 days of Jessica's January that's right I went there that is all I have for today. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!